let's learn how to create a tritone material. All right, so to create our tritone material or shader, I'm going to start the blank project. I'm going to add a graph unlit material. I'm going to rename that to tritone. And so that we have some visible output as we work, I'm just going to add a screen image, switch that to stretch use my tritone material and now we're good to go so make sure you have your material selected and if you don't see the material editor tab here just come up to window panels material editor now we're good to go so make sure you're in the material editor tab and you have multiple materials make sure your tritone one is selected all right so just so we have a little more space to look in here you can resize that I'm going to click on my inspector panel. Just drag that over here so I have a little more space. And let's get started. So this UV scale and scale chords, we don't need those nodes. I'll just plug the UV chords straight into our texture. And let's get started. So for our base texture, we do want this. We need something going in to convert to three different colors. But over in our inspector panel, let's take a look at our base texture. It's just pulling in a white image. Let's click there, pull in our device camera texture. All right. So we don't want to work with our red, green, and blue values. We want to get brightness and darkness. So let's add node, search for luminance, we'll plug in our texture, set that in our output. You can see we've got a grayscale image where zero is black, one is white, everything else in between is some shade of gray. And that is exactly what we want. So now that we have that, let's start blocking out our different chunks so if our brightness is above a certain value we want to apply a certain color so let's add a greater or equal we'll plug our luminance into that and then i'm going to add a float parameter what this will let me do is instead of having to click on here and put my value here the float parameter will give me a new option over in the inspector panel so let's rename this to highlight threshold. Um, now, don't worry, it's not going to show up over here yet because whatever this is plugged into eventually needs to end up in our shader output. So let's take care of that. So if our luminance is greater than or equal to our threshold, then we want to assign a certain color. So let's add an if else. We'll plug that into the condition. So if true, we'll go with the first value. Otherwise, we'll have this default. So let's add a color parameter. Let's name that highlight. We'll plug that in there. Let's plug this into our shader. Now our preview's gone all white, but don't worry. We can now set our highlight threshold and our highlight color. So let's just set the threshold to 0 0.5. And now you can see we have something going on. So if our luminance is greater than 0 0.5, we're going with the white color. Um, this black that we're getting, that's because this if else, our default value, if we don't meet the condition, it's passing along the value of 0, 0, 0, 0, which is just going to be black. So this is working pretty good. If we wanted, we could take this color parameter, copy it, plug it into the bottom. But since we're going for tritone instead of duotone, we need to plug something else into this default. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's copy our highlight threshold. 
we're going to call this the midtone threshold. So now we're going to say if you're less than the highlight but greater than or equal to the midtone, we'll give you another color, and then our else will then be our shadow color. So let's copy this greater or equal, and let's add a less. So we need to take our luminance, we'll put that into each of those. There we go. There we go. So we want to make sure we're less than our highlight threshold. I can't connect anything today, but greater than or equal to our midtone threshold. Now we'll need another if else, but we can't plug two conditionals into the single condition slot, so we need to combine them with an and because we want them to both be true. So if our less than and our greater or equal to are true, then it will come into our condition. Now let's copy these color parameters. We'll call this one midtone. If you are between those two values, then you'll be our shadow color. Let's plug those in. Now, let's move this stuff over. Here's our original if else. We'll take our new one, I'll we'll plug it into the bottom. So if our luminance is greater than or equal to our highlight threshold with our highlight color. Otherwise, we're gonna come down to this default or the else portion. And we'll come along, we'll see there's another if else. So if our luminance is less than the highlight threshold, greater than the midtone threshold, then we'll go with our midtone color, otherwise our shadow. And all that feeds into our shader output. So we got this white screen again. Let's fix that. So I'm going to come down to my parameters. Let's set our midtone. I'll just go with gray. All right, we have this duo tone effect. So let's go ahead and add our shadow. That's not showing up because we need to change our threshold. 0 0.3 sounds about good. And there we go. We got our tritone effect, white, gray, black. And we can set any colors we want. So I'm just gonna drag my spectra panel back over really quick so we can see our options a little better. All right. So this is pretty good, but let's say that we don't just want this tritone effect. Let's say we have something else going on in our scene. So I'm just going to add a head binding really quick. And to that head binding, I'm going to add a sphere. Uh, but there's no sphere showing up. That's because our tritone input is taking our device camera texture. Now this doesn't have anything else besides just what the camera seeing. It doesn't have any other effects or 3D objects or images you might have added. Uh, but there's a really easy way around that. So come to your resources panel and add a screen texture. Now select that. Um, Snapchat recommends you switch that to every pass. Uh, it's on there. Uh, Lin Studio documentation. I'm not sure that this will really make a difference here, but I'll go ahead and listen to what they have to say. We'll change that to every pass. Now, either on our material or here on this screen image, we're going to switch that to screen texture. And now you can see our sphere showed up. Now let's hide that face occluder. Now you can see it better. So, what is the screen texture? So the screen texture essentially takes everything going on in your scene and kind of adds it into an image, a texture, and then you can use that in uh, different materials or on different images. So the device camera texture is just what the camera sees. The screen texture will grab essentially everything happening above it over here and make sure that's all present in that texture. 
So now we can add anything we want uh, into this camera. We can add all sorts of face effects, 3D objects, images, and they'll all be included in our tritone effect. Now there is an alternative way rather than using the screen image. So I'm going to delete this orthographic camera and I'm going to add a post effect. It doesn't matter which one. Just add it. Now over in the inspector panel, change the material to your tritone and you're good to go. Um, so if our screen texture is grabbing everything above it and making sure it's present in that image, the post effect is kind of doing the same thing. It's taking everything above it and making sure it applies this material. It's a post effect. After everything else is happening, we want to apply this effect. Uh, so it's really simple. You can either use the screen image and orthographic camera, or you can use a post effect. Just add whichever one, set your tritone material, and you can have any other 3D object in your scene included in the effect. Now just to finish things off, if you select your material, right click, you can export that. Uh, I'll save it as a Lin Studio material file. And now in any other project, you can import that. Uh, you, so you don't need to ever build this from scratch again. You just create it once, export it. Now, once you import another project, uh, just add screen texture, set your thresholds, set your colors, and you're good to go.